G'day folks and welcome to another round. So there's one thing that I want to go through before we get on to uh, another algorithm. We'll do an image processing algorithm next. But before we do that we've got to know about addressing modes. So first of all, what is an addressing mode? Well, it's just a term to mean um, well various things. There's no standard for what it means, but today I'm going to mean um, just the different parameters that we can pass to uh, an instruction. So say mov rbx and 20 um, I'll say that that's an addressing mode right there, that's the register addressing mode and I'll say that that's another one, that's the immediate addressing mode. Alrighty? So, yeah, just the different types of parameters that we can have. Alrighty, so that was um, the first two, we'll say uh, register and the other one was immediate Now just a couple of things that you can do with an immediate value, you don't have to specify them in base 10 for example, if you want to specify an immediate value in hexadecimal, which is of course uh, base 16, you write out your number, so 14F2 for example, and you finish it with the H suffix to tell the uh, assembler that you mean a hexadecimal number here, just so that it doesn't get confused. And the other thing to be careful of with hexadecimal numbers, the uh, leftmost digit must be a numerical digit. So if your number happens to start with one of the letters A through F on the uh, left here, then you've got to add a zero. So something like F A C E might be our uh, hexadecimal number. We can put an H there, but the other thing that we've got to do is put a zero there. It's not going to make this number any longer. Um, this number is still just going to be the uh, two bytes or whatever but um, the assembler needs that zero there. Okay, otherwise you'll get a um, compile time error. Okay, another base that we can write in is octal, which is of course uh, base 8. It uses the digits 0 through 7, so there's no 8s and there's no 9s, but um, the suffix for octal is O, so 1, 2, 4, 7, O, to indicate to the assembler that you mean an octal number here. Alrighty. And of course we've got our faithful binary, which has the uh, B suffix, just like that. Uh, yep, the B after a number tells it that it's uh, it's binary that you mean. And uh, in binary you've only got the digits 0 and 1, as I'm sure everybody's aware. Oh, hello. Okay, finally, if there's no suffix at all, I mean if you haven't got H, O or B, um, the assembler assumes that you mean decimal, the faithful uh, base 10 counting system that we use all the time. So 1, 2, 4, 8, for example, will mean the uh, decimal number 1248. Alternatively, if you're really keen on putting a suffix on the end, uh, you can put a D. 1, 2, 4, 8, D for decimal. But the uh, assembler is well aware that humans count in base 10, so, you know, without any suffix at all, it'll assume base 10. Alrighty, so that's um, that's just a few things about immediate values. Let's move on now to some slightly more interesting uh, addressing modes. So the other one that we can do is, uh, I'll call it label, or sort of slash variable, I guess. Um, I think properly you're supposed to call all of these things labels, but um, it gets a bit confusing, so uh, I like to call them labels or variables. Um, a label, I sort of usually will mean um, a label in the code segment, whereas a variable will mean a label from the data segment. Okay, what does it mean? Well, we could say, actually, let's go down here and we'll say that we've got um, my label somewhere in our code segment. Um, we can move the address of that into RAX. May. Make it easy. My label. Um, so this is going to put... Um, actually, what it'll do is, if we've got another another command down here, maybe inc rcx, um, it'll move the address of uh, that line right there into RAX. So that at some other point, um, you can say jump RAX and um, yeah that'll be functionally equivalent to saying jump my label only of course RAX is a register so we can add to it, we can minus it, we can set it to other labels 
um, yeah, you've essentially you, you've essentially got a label pointer, really, which is uh, very very cool. Anyway, that's a label in the uh, code segment, but um, if you want to refer to a label in the data segment, we know that that's pretty easy as well. So we've got uh, maybe my byte, and it's a byte, and it's zero. Um, we know that we're free in our code to say something like mov my byte and four. Okay, so that would be using um, a label from the data segment, or uh, a variable in other words. But uh, do be aware that this my byte just here is actually a pointer, and uh, yeah, it's pointing to a spot in memory. It's actually a number. It sort of means something closer to um, closer to that with square brackets around it. Move into memory um, my byte, whatever my byte is pointing to move the 4 into that memory spot. Anyway, that can get really confusing just terminology wise. It's it's not difficult in practice, but it's confusing to read on paper. Okay, so that's labels. But um yeah, now things get really interesting. So we can also use uh label plus or minus offset. Okay, so if we've got maybe up here, A, in our data segment, A byte is 0, and B byte is 0, then um, we can say mov A plus 1, 6, and these two bytes here will be beside each other in memory, so this line just here is going to um, move the value 6 into B. Alrighty, actually, no, it won't. What we need to do is specify that it's a byte pointer. Okay, so yeah, that's that's something to be very, very careful of. There's no longer any indication of um, what size 6 is. So you can write 6 as uh, just 6 to mean a byte, or you can write um, 6 as a word, or you might mean a double word, a quad word. There's no indication, so you've got to put the uh, size of the pointer right there. Alternatively, if we wanted to move um, something into A, we could use the minus, so mov B minus 1, uh, 4, oops, I forgot to put the byte pointer in again, byte PTR, and yeah, that'll move something into A, even though uh, we're referencing B. Does that make sense? Okay, there's, a, there's another couple of these um, same sort of idea. This is called like the, the base index or the base offset. Um, addressing modes. Um, okay, we've also got register plus offset. Oh, the offsets, I want to say, they're always immediate. They're immediate values here. When I say offset, I mean an immediate value, so maybe it would be better if I write, wrote that, but um, I don't know. Okay, so this just means something like mov byte ptr rcx plus 20. 40. Okay, this is going to move the value 40 into um, the byte that RCX is pointing to, plus 20. So, if this is our RAM just here, maybe RCX is pointing right there at something. RCX. Um, it's not going to move the 40 into that. It's going to move the 40 into that, plus 20. So, maybe this would be 1, oh sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Maybe down here is the uh, RCX plus 20, so that's where the 40 is going to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me scrub all that out. Gosh, it'd be good if I had a bigger eraser. Um. Hey! <coughs> okay, that's register plus offset. Okay, that's better. Um, we've also got register plus register. So something like um, mov word ptr rax plus rbx and whatever value we're moving, 20. 
and it's going to find whatever RAX is pointing to, it's going to add to that memory location whatever's in RBX, and it's going to stick 20 in that RAM box. So RAX might be pointing up here somewhere, like that, maybe RBX is um, say 10, so um, RAX plus RBX, it's going to stick a 20 in there. Alrighty, I do want to mention that you've got to be careful, there's no minus for these two. The only time you can do uh, a subtraction is with the uh, label plus or minus offset. And all three of these are sort of just called base index. Base plus index. Where the um, label here, or the first one, is, uh, is the base. And the index I've called offset, or uh, this second register just here. Which, um, yeah, I prefer the word actually, base plus offset but it doesn't really matter, it's up to you. The other thing that you should note is that there's a few ways to write these. So for example, um, reg plus reg. This is exactly the same as this, and the same with reg, reg. Alright, two lots of square brackets. Again, this just means add the two together. and. Uh, I've actually just picked this version out. I always put all of my uh, parameters into a single uh, bunch of square brackets. It's just a convention that I've chosen, and if you happen to prefer one of these, then uh, feel free to use it. But uh, also do note that if you're reading other people's codes, maybe they'll prefer these ways to do it. I don't know. It's all up to you. Same thing. Okay, one final thing that I want to mention about these particular addressing modes before we go on is that um, if offset is an immediate value, um, you can actually put in a calculation so long as it uh, evaluates to a constant. Okay, so something like um, mov maybe byte ptr rax plus 72 minus 1 multiplied by 8 20. Okay, so this is actually using um, this addressing mode, register plus offset, and this, my little calculation just here, 72 minus 1, which would be 71 multiplied by 8, is uh, easily evaluates to a constant, so the assembler will figure that out, and uh, yeah, it'll write the proper register plus offset for us. Just a little convenience there for the programmer. Calculations. Do note that if this doesn't uh, evaluate to a constant, then it's not going to work. So if this was RBX, for example, 72 minus RBX multiplied by 8, that's not a constant, so it's going to complain. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Okay, so now we've got um, another very important type of addressing mode, and that is uh, SIB, or Scale Index Base. Let me just... Um, Let's get a new page, shall we? S I B scale index base, and this is how it works. We've got reg plus reg multiplied by scale. Uh, this is the way that I always write it, but um, you can swap these things around. Like you could have scale multiplied by uh, index plus base, the way that the uh, SIB, actually I should write up here, scale index base. Yeah, you can swap the parameters around if you like, but uh, I always write it like this. So this here is my base, um, this is my index, and this is my scale. Obviously it's got scale written there. And the way that this works is scale can be any one of um, 1, 2, 4, or 8. And uh, base and index are both registers. So something like um, mov, maybe we'll go d word ptr rbx plus rax multiplied by 4, uh, 80. Okay, once again, note that we've got to put the uh, size of the pointer because it's no longer known what we mean by 80, we could mean anything. And uh, yeah, so the base just here is RBX, so maybe we've got an array in memory that looks something like this. And we 
pointing to the base of the array with RBX and maybe RAX begins at 0 um, let me just make a note of that, RAX equals 0 at the start so um, RAX multiplied by 4 is going to be 0, we're going to move an 80 right there then if we iterate through our loop and down at the bottom of our loop somewhere we've got uh, inc RAX then instead of jumping to the next byte in the array um, you can see that we're trying to traverse the array here in double words not bytes so uh, that's where the scale comes in multiplied by 4 uh, RAX will then equal 1 sorry after that uh, inc instruction RAX will equal 1 and RAX multiplied by 4 will equal 4 so RBX plus 4 is going to be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 right there and it'll move an 80 into there so this is how you um, traverse an array or how you very easily traverse an array if the array is not in bytes in this particular example we're trying to traverse an array in D words so we used the 4 as the scale um, if you're traversing an array in words you'd use 2 as the scale um, if you're doing it in bytes and you use 1 as the scale or just leave the scale off altogether and uh, of course quad words you use 8 does that make sense? Um, yeah I hope so, so this will probably be the one that um, well it's, it's the most complicated of them all but it's really pretty simple as well it might seem a bit confusing when you look at it on paper but once again it's really easy in practice so uh, yeah, that's about it really for our introduction to the different uh, addressing modes. And uh, thank you for listening.